As many of you know, my big brother Dan Johnson and his colleague Tony Kumar were killed in 2005 when a log truck lost its load on their vehicle. I was devastated. I had never experienced a tragedy before and grief struck me to the core. My emotions were in turmoil, but many people faithfully prayed for me. And in answer to those prayers, God did not forsake me. He provided for me beyond what I could ask or imagine. He shone light into my darkness. Now I love how God's methods of reaching us don't have to be traditional. Granted, I didn't have a burning bush or a talking donkey, but while paying for repairs on my car at the auto shop, I noticed the young receptionist had a memorial tattooed on her arm. So we got into a conversation about that and shared stories of our losses. It was just one of those things where I didn't expect to meet God there at the car repair shop. So she ran back in the back of her office because she'd been reading a book that she wanted to copy some pages for for me. And the book that she copied was a book called Traveling Light and it was written by Maxim Cato. And in the very chapter that she copied for me were the words that I needed to hear. Listen, it said, in God's plan, every life is long enough and every death is timely. And this is important, though you and I might wish for a longer life, for our loved one, they don't. Ironically, they are the ones that first accept God's decision of death. Well, we are shaking our heads in disbelief. They're raising their hands in praise. They're having the worship time. And while we're mourning at the grave, they're marveling at heaven. Well, we are questioning God. They are praising God. Now, personally, I think that God was up there showing my brother how the volcanoes work. He was a scientist. And shortly after he died, the volcanoes started going off around. Either that or our ears were peaked to it. But I think that was God going, oh, and look what happens when you push this. <laughs> anyway. So through a grief counselor, um, God directed me to begin journaling. Each morning, I would download my heart, my prayers, and my thoughts onto paper. One entry took a form of a letter to my brother, and as I wrote the words, You're in heaven. You're doing fine there. God began to move my mindset. As a Christian, I have the truth of the glory of heaven to cling to, and I kind of started to sing it. God wanted me to see also that I wasn't the only one that had experienced grief. I started to see in the paper accidents and hear about the soldiers coming, you know, the news coming back from Iraq. And many of you shared your stories with me and we consoled one another. Through that I realized that I'm not the only one that's ever been in the throes of grief. And it felt like I was trapped in the fetal position of just not wanting to move. But by thinking about the thought of, I've got to share my song, I began to open up and allow myself to be entertaining the idea of singing this song that I'd written as a letter. Well, I made a rough draft of it, went into the studio with my friend and she played the piano. And so I had it down, the song, and um, kept on wondering what God, God wanted me to do with it. And next, God directed me to a posting on Craigslist of all places, through which I met a gentleman named Daniel Christofferson. He's a record producer with an amazing group of studio musicians, and together we made offerings. And honestly, being creative was so invigorating. I loved waiting on the Lord for what he wanted me to say, me to say in the lyrics. And miraculously, in the six months that it took to do the recording, he brought me and the dance song to a place of healing in which I can proclaim with joy 
you're in heaven. I heard Joyce Meyer say once, we go through, through things that are greater than us, but not greater than him. So starting with a grace moment, God gave me the gift of hope. Because he has Dan, I can have courage. With that hope, I can minister in song. He gave me a mission and asked me to go on in Dan's honor. He took tragedy and turned it into grace. Hallelujah. I can talk forever about God's mercy and kindness and the amazing ways that he's provided me along the way. And there are a lot of delightful stories that I could share with you of how God let me know that he was there working around and inside of me. But for now, let me sing, You're in Heaven. <laughs> 